Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. This is part, I'm not too sure, because I'm still having problems with the, uh, everything. <laughs> but, um, this is a continuation of the 1977 live stream by Owen Benjamin with Ian Smith. You know what really blows their mind, too, and makes them nuts? Because I have the same effect on people. My wife says wherever <laughs> I go, she goes... This, she's like, all the little insects and snakes under rocks will just start hissing wherever I go. Like, they're like, <laughs> because it's just like what you're talking about. I'm not motivated by what they are and they don't know what to do. And what drives them even more nuts is when you're listening to Owen Benjamin talk about himself this way, speaking for his wife, is absurd. Uh, because he's, he's saying it as though it's a joke and Ian's laughing about it. But knowing what Owen Benjamin has done and hearing him say that his wife says that about him everywhere he goes, all the little insects hiss and all that kind of stuff. If he's comparing that to everywhere he goes or people um, not accepting him, well, it's because of his own actions. He is a disgusting, uh, horrendous individual that during 2020 ran an investment scam and then continuously pretends to be, parades around as though he's a comedian, while not practicing comedy. You're having a good time doing it? Yes. Dude, like, yes. me yeah. and the Bears, our motto was no one's having more fun than us. And I was, you know, a sitcom regular. So kudos to Owen for waiting almost 40 minutes before he brings up his cult and his Hollywood career. Comedy Central specials, Vince Vaughn tours, Adam Sandler movies. So they're like, there's no way that guy will give up that stuff. And not only yeah. would I do that, they're like, dude, they kicked me off Airbnb. Like I couldn't even rent out something on Airbnb. <laughs> you know, me like, too. yeah, they, they wouldn't. They're like, because the whole thing is we're not going to let you make any money. I think that might be one of the only legitimate things he's ever been kicked off of. Because that's that seems to be the only consistent thing that he brings up. With random people. Airbnb. Honestly, I have no idea why he was kicked off of that. Because all the other platforms he kicked himself off of so that he could label himself as the most banned comedian in the world. Just visit his web, his website. That's what he calls himself. Money, and then you're going to crawl and squirm. And dude, I'm like, I got goats. We can get our own milk from goat tits. And they're like, what the fuck? Because... <laughs> Because they, 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 they're terrified of uh, people that they can't, because like some people would say, oh, they're going to kill you or they're going to come for you. They only do that with people that want what they have. So like, let's say you're fighting the state or you're fighting one of these guys, but you want to be that guy. Like you want to be the bank. Then they have protocols. But if you don't care, they literally don't have a response. They just, they just try and scare you and scream at you and stuff. And and I find it hilarious, man, because it's the same with comedy. I'm like, what comedian got into this business to become a millionaire? I'm like, we make fun of them. Like, why yeah. would, like, I see all these comics that are saying insane. That's so strange. He moved to Hollywood so that he could be a millionaire. And he had a moderately to high success rate up until a certain point. He was given opportunity after opportunity. He had a full length feature film with uh, Matthew Lillard and Christina Ritchie. He can't act. He was pretty funny at a certain point, but he was a, a piano comic and he didn't get enough respect and the jobs dried up according to himself. And then he moved and then he realized, Oh, I'm not making as much money. Cause he tried to do a uh, laborious job with his brother who is a, uh, lumberjack and he didn't want to do that and so he realized he could do the right wing grifting thing and now we are where we are and he's con continuously rewriting his history they all cucked I mean it was nuts they're all getting their little sticker and the new normal and calling everybody grandma killer and all this. And I'm like, dude, we're supposed to be the renegades. Like we mock yes. those guys. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you yeah. You're and... supposed to be the ones that laugh at, laugh at authority and, and poke fun at everything and, and make. 
Shout out to Burt Crusher, because while Owen was running his investment scam, Burt was actually re-innovating the uh, comic scene by running shows in drive-in theaters. So much so that, um, oh, I can't think of his name. I never can. He's a world-famous comedian. Even called him up and said, hey, man, do you mind if I do what you're doing? He said, dude, go for it. I'm doing this because obviously we can't go to clubs and we need to feed our family. People think Jim Gaffigan is who supposedly called up Bert and asked him. And, and don't listen to rules and be politically incorrect. That's yeah. what humor, that's a huge aspect of humor is, is like, is being uncontrollable and unexpected and, and, you know, all of those things. And then, you know, you look at today's, it's it's funny because they're like they they follow scripts, you know, most of them at this point. There's certain things that you're allowed to make fun of and not and stay far away from that. And if you don't, you know, they're like, well, we'll take your comedy tour from you. Oh, dude, but, all of it. I, I, I'm painted on the wall of the Hollywood improv in a mural and I'm not. Alone. This whole picture that they're trying to paint, just if you're a fan of comedy, check out Kill Tony. It blows holes in the theory that you're not allowed to make fun of anything. Them saying, well, you can't make fun of this, this, and this. It's the number one live podcast in the world. It just doesn't make any sense what they're saying. Not allowed in any comedy clubs. And there's no, they don't even have an explanation, which makes them twitch, like what you're saying. Where they're like, well, you know, he's very insensitive. From you. Oh, dude, but all of it. I, 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 I'm painted on the wall of the Hollywood Improv in a mural. And I'm not allowed in any comedy clubs. No, yes, yes he is. <laughs> that is so untrue. If you're a comedian and you draw in a crowd, 90% of people out there that own a venue want you there because they make money. He's just not a practicing comedian. A practicing stand-up comedian. He doesn't get on stage on a weekly or daily basis. He just doesn't do it. He, he exists in the echo chamber of his cult. And there's no, they don't even have an explanation, which makes them twitch, like what you're saying, where they're like, well, you know, he's very insensitive. He mocks the victims of sexual assault. And the joke was uh, the Me Too movement. I'm at the parade and the whole joke was I thought it was a pound sign. So I'm like, pound me too, ladies, calm down. It was like, I'm like, pound that's a great joke if he wrote it. Me too. <laughs> Ladies, don't be so thirsty. Dude, that was the whole joke. And Patreon spent millions of dollars making sure I wasn't allowed on their platform because, yeah, it's like it's like a wild animal. Like They don't know what I, we're going to do, but it's not bad. I mean, I used to joke around that the media was reacting like I was some like paramilitary like guy that wanted to fight. or I was, I was like, I thought you were... Tapping my phone, like, please tap my phone. My texts are all like, <laughs> dude, this black guy. I'm like, <laughs> and the thing about being a comic is I have to mock everyone or I'm like a coward. It's like, so we can't mock Jewish people, but we can mock Christian and Muslim people. Like, then we're frauds. Like, I can't be a fraud. I can't be like in the zone if, if I have these rules. Well, comedy is truth. You know, like, yeah. there's, there's like the reason why Comedy isn't truth, but there's truth in comedy. That's two different things. Because sometimes things are funny because it's absurd and it's not true. It's an exaggeration. It's a lie. A lot of comedians stand up and lie. And that, that's where the funny is. So truth isn't, comedy isn't truth, but there is truth in comedy. And sometimes things are funny because it's true, but it's not as simple as what they're trying to make it sound. And so far, we're 41 minutes in. For the people that are saying, if, if there are people saying that Ian is laughing because he's as disgusting as Owen, no, I mean, he, he's doing an interview. And the guy that's doing the interview is at least pretending to be funny. I mean, what are you going to do? You know? So I think he's just doing the best that he can. I'm not hating on him for laughing at all. I, things are funny is because there's truth in it. Yeah. You know, and, and you, you're turning away from the truth by being like, oh, we can't talk about that subject because because they said so, you know, because 
because we decided that that's uh, that's just you know something that you can't talk about. And it's like, no, we're going to talk about everything. And that's but going back to what you said about having fun, that was something that I didn't even realize that that we were like how important that was, but we were doing it just as a way to stay sane too. Yeah, dude. You know, because it is, it is stressful. Like when, when you're, when you're like, shit, I don't have an income right now. It, you know, that it, it is stressful. It's not as if it's easy, but it is something that obviously you can overcome. You know, it, it requires a little bit of, you know, picking yourself up by your bootstraps and some ingenuity and, and, you know, betting heavily on your own abilities. But I mean, we, we had this contact tracing system in place, um, you know, because we, we wanted them to come check the paperwork, you know, so everybody that came in filled out a, a, a time and a date stamp and we had them, you know, as in the gym and the stack just, it was like on paper. It was like really ghetto. Um, and the stacks kept growing and it was like this mountain of paper in the other side of the gym and like every mile marker we would hit we would stand next to it and it ultimately got like taller than us. And we would make these videos just like talking shit and laughing and, you know, like making fun of governor Murphy. We made t-shirts where you remember the old like bumper stickers where, um, the little cartoon dudes like peeing on a Ford. Yeah. Um, so we made, uh, figures of, of myself and my partner peeing on governor Murphy's head. We sold probably 10,000 of those shirts. Like people were wearing them out in public where it's like Governor Murphy's got a mask on, he's sitting Indian style and he's getting peed on. Like, and they just, they didn't know what to do because they, they need you to react a certain way. And when, when you're not angry or, or that you can at least control your anger, that's key, you know, because that's what they, that's what they wanted. They want you to be like the raving lunatic. They wanted you to be outside the gym. Like, I know we got to fight them. We got to, you know, like I had people call and they'll be like, we'll, we'll come stand there with guns. I'm like, dude, no, we're good. Exactly, dude. We're just going to open the gym. We're fine. Um, you know, like we don't need a gun to open it up. We just need the key to the front door. Dude, we're it's good. crazy how similar our story, because fitness is truth too. It's like you can't hide from fitness. Like how, yeah. like, yeah. C- can you run a mile? Can you bench 260? Like can, what's your body fat index? Like fitness is all about truth too. And man, it's the same thing. Like for me, it was like, a lot of it was I wasn't allowed to make fun of like the Holocaust or something. But if I was freaking out about, oh, we got to go with these people instead. This is so stupid. Listen, to- he was freaking out, especially during this time. The majority of his content, from my recollection, especially if you watch the Milker Nation 10 uh, hour documentary, fear porn, fear porn, fear porn. The cities are going to burn, blah, blah, blah. Give me your money. I'm jealous of y'all because all y'all have to do is give me money disgusting this individual known as owen benjamin (laughs) it's ridiculous dad i made a video saying that uh i was a holocaust supplier and it was actually six billion and i was just (laughs) being funny about it and dude they they went nuts they're like you're and then they and then they just stopped talking about me because they knew because the communist types they don't have a sense of humor so that when they repeat something you say people laugh and they don't know why like what kept happening to me is they're like, <laughs> Owen Benjamin says he wants to bring slavery back. So Sean King admits he's white and people are like, ah, and they're like, what's like, they don't understand Just humor. Be offended by it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. And then they can't come. You're- I'm not saying that he stole that from uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, but there's an interview, a couple interviews where Tony talks about that whenever he was, they tried to cancel him three years ago. Uh, because of some kind of Asian joke or whatever. And Tony said the same thing. He was, he, he said, whenever they reprint our jokes, people laugh, even though it's supposed to be taken out of context. But whenever you read what they said, sometimes people thought it was funny. You're so right about the no gun thing and no like fight the government because they have protocol for that. They're like, this is. They the want you to do that. Yeah, I mean, but, that's yeah. because they can they can paint that very very quickly as you're you're an extremist and you're violent and you need to be controlled and you need to be jailed. But if you're just laughing at them, like giving them the finger, you know they 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 get so um, 
So another story. So we had a lot of people inside sort of the government, you know, who were sympathetic to us. And we had a couple people in the governor's office. We would get like anonymous emails, you know, like, hey, you know, just just as a heads up, this is happening. So they uh, they came to lock our doors a second time somewhere through the story. And um, I had called one of my buddies. His name's Lou Uridel. He was actually the first gym owner in the country to open. He did it in in L.A. Um, or somewhere outside of L.A. County. And, um, you know, he ultimately figured out how to work the system and stay open. If he had a chiropractor or something. But we would all call each other and we were all fighting these similar but different battles because every place was using different mechanisms of the state. Sometimes it was the health department, it was the courts, it was the police, it was it was the crazy liberals. Like they would just like like you were saying, you know, earlier when we were texting, like a lot of times they would just use society, you know, and they would mobilize BLM to come shut you down. Absolutely. Um, so I'm telling them and I'm like, hey, Lou, I'm like, they're you know, we just got out of court. They're, they said they're coming to lock our doors again. And he goes, take them off. And I was like, uh, yeah. And it was like, oh, oh shit, that's a, that's a great idea. Like, you know, so we took the doors off the hinges and we wound up staying open for like 40 days, 24 seven. It was just, there was just a wide open front, you know, front door. Was it 40 um, days? Was it 40 days? It, yeah, we were. It was Dude, 40 it, days before the. Is it crazy how like numerologically biblical yeah, it would it, get? It was, it's very weird. Like 40 days, 40 nights, yeah. we, were, we were open. Like it's. Yeah. Um, when I tell that, people people always catch that. They're like, "How many days?" Like 40. Um, so ultimately, they came and arrested us. And when we came back, there was like plywood on the door. Like they had they had put like, it, it must have been like quarter inch plywood, and it's like oh. Owen's sitting there beaming as though his existence through, throughout this situation is similar to Ian's, and it's not. He acts as though he is some form of, of pivot, uh, pivotal figure in freedom of speech and all that. At one point, maybe. But there's no, there's no similarities to what Ian has gone through compared to what Owen has gone through. They physically arrested him for what he was doing. Owen has said very, very questionable things about children and consent and whatnot, and nobody of authority seems to bat an eye. They're not the same. Okay, so we were like, all right, you know what? Let's take a day off. Let's, like, go rest and recover. And we came back, and we put out, you know, on the emergency broadcast system, hey, we got a little surprise for everybody. Come to the gym at 12 o'clock, you know, if you want to work out. You know, and obviously the parking lot's full. And, uh, you know, dramatically, my former partner and I, like, 300 kick the plywood off uh, and, like, bust it down. You know, and I'm, I'm on the phone with Tucker earlier that day, and I'm like, hey, make sure you save a spot for me tonight. You know, Tucker was very good to us. He had he had me on a total of 12 times. Nice. Um, yeah, and he, he said that early on. He <clears> said, hey, you're going to need media attention, so call me if you need me. Like, I'll do my best to get to get – and every time – wouldn't always be that day. Sometimes it would be the last 30 seconds of the show, but he always gave us a little bit of a bump to like get back in front of people's uh, eyes and ears. Yeah. He seems like he has good intentions that dude. From, from everything I can tell, um, you know, and, and he's done a solid for us. So that video went viral again, obviously. Um, and we got a, uh, a, an email the next day and it's, you know, I forget the woman's, what, what her, her, fake name was um and she says like hey it's me so and so she's like i just want to let you know that you have really gotten to him and she said when he came in this morning you know his whatever his aides are you know told him that you guys kicked the the doors off yesterday and reopened she said i heard crashing and banging and cursing uh. in his office and it was like that that to us, it was like, we, we are kicking your ass. Yeah. You're like, his authority are, now. Like you're now in control. Like he's Xerxes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> and it, it was just, it was such a, like such a good feeling because we had fun with it. We were laughing. Like, you know, we were high fiving each other. People are hugging, you know, people, people took the plywood when it was kicked out and they're in the parking lot stomping on it. And 
tearing it apart. And, you know, it's like we had so much fun. And he was just imploding. He just had no, he wouldn't even answer the questions about it. You know, when he was questioned, he's like, oh, you know, you know, next question. Like, because again, like he didn't even have the capacity to, to answer that without like breaking down. So <laughs> the, the ability to have fun under pressure is, I mean, it, it, it. And that's a similarity between who he's referring to Ian. I guess it's the governor. And the way Owen runs his cult is because he is above reproach. He is the unslaughterable cow, the golden calf that you cannot touch. Everything else we could tear down or whatever, milk it for all it's worth, but do not question Owen's authority inside the echo chamber of the bear cult. And it's crazy that there's so many similarities between what Ian is talking about and Owen himself with how he conducts his everyday life makes you almost invincible you know because it, it lowers the stress levels that you're under because like i said whatever you're going to go through is going to be challenging there are going to be points where you're like Fuck, what do i do but if you can learn to laugh and learn to take it just just one one day at a time and and find some humor in it and it, it's it's not that bad it really and simply not react not everything good or bad really necessarily requires a response. And that's one thing that I've been trying to actively implement, uh, implement in my personal life. Not everything requires a response. It isn't, and it helps you get to a point where you're able to find whatever is. What I mean is reaction. I was using the word response, but reaction. Respond to it, but just it doesn't necessarily require you to react in any kind of way. Sometimes it's just information, digest it. Okay, well, does it require immediate attention? Is it serious? Like, what is it? It's next for you, you know? So where I'm, a, I'm a big fan of just, of, of you know, putting a smile on your face even when you don't want to and, and finding the humor and the absurdity in it, in it, even if it's like directed directly at you. Yeah, my wife gave me good advice uh, along the way because it, it's the same thing. It it does get crazy stressful, but at the same time, not that bad. And my wife would say, "Don't let them take your joy." Like I, I would run scenarios yeah. in my head, and we we you know I have like four kids now, and the whole time we're having these babies, and I'm like, so then they could take this, and then can they get this? And so I have a well, but if they shut off the electricity, can I hand pump the well? And I, I'll just get in this loop. Because I'm like, they might not let me in a grocery store. That's why I'm literally a farmer now. So I was like <laughs> strategizing. Dude, we make our own butter. My eyes rolled so hard <laughs> whenever you said, dude, that's literally why I'm a farmer right now. <laughs> I know. No, you're not, Owen. You're not. I have a greenhouse. I'm like, we, I will not cook. But she was yeah. like, but she was like, don't let them ever take your joy and just, she was like, you're not guaranteed anything. She's like, we could no. be dead tomorrow. Like, you don't, we don't know what tomorrow is. So just never let them take your joy. Do a deep dive into Owen's podcast or whatever, his live streams. And really just pick one random one and actually pay attention to how joyful he is and how often enjoy the day and it and it's funny how when you go through the looking glass like that you do level up a lot like you realize that things aren't that scary you know it's it's just not that big of a deal like I've never been to prison or anything but I wonder if even that is like that where people are like yeah prison was all right <laughs> you know prison I, I mean I did I did five years it, it sucks but it's not that bad yeah. and, and you yeah. know honestly I some of the funniest people I've met were were guys that were doing time. Yeah, I listen you know? to Matt Cox. You ever listen to Matt Cox? He did like 12 or 13 years for mortgage fraud. He's funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like some of his stories, I'm like that, he goes, he goes, it's just like a really, really bad summer camp. <laughs> he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like, like I had some the, great the, conversations. The worst part of it is just the time that goes by. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, other than that, like even the scary aspects of it, it's like, whatever, dude. Like most of the time you're like bullshit and playing poker. You know, and, and like waiting for somebody to get done, you know, cooking their noodles in the microwave. You know, like that's that's about as bad as it gets. It's just it's just boring. Like so even your worst nightmares 
or what you think is like the end is never, you know, and, and the, the one thing you said about leveling up, like the person that I am today as a result of choosing to go through that has made me a better, a better man, just a, a single standing entity, but also a better son, you know, a better father, a better husband. It's because it's, it's given me a different perspective on things to where I feel so much more in control of my life because I've witnessed the individual power that I do have. And I've witnessed that I, I can develop skills that I don't have and that I I'm capable of, you know, way more than I, than I ever thought. You know, I talk about that in the end of my book where, you know, if you would have asked me five years ago, you know, like, Hey, you think you could have the impact on the world that you did? You know, I would have told myself the same lie, the same very dangerous lie that we all tell ourselves. And that's that somehow our choices don't really matter. And like that, that, you know, if I would have kept my gym closed, it wouldn't have mattered. You know what I mean? Or if I opened this is whenever I'm going to interrupt and say, this is whenever it becomes problematic in the Owen sphere of things, because this conversation so far, I think is probably one of the best conversations that Owen has ever had. And I'm, I'm giving Owen far too much credit with that because it, if you've listened thus far, we're almost 60 minutes in and it's not really been conversational. This guy, Ian, will talk for, for a while, and then Owen will bring it back to him for the most part. But the things that Ian is bringing to the table is good stuff. It, it really is. I haven't found any problem with Ian so far. It wouldn't have mattered. And it's like, no, it did fucking matter. Like, it matters a lot because you don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's going to support you. You don't know who you're going to network with. You don't. And what I meant by that was uh because it, it, it almost if you, if you're walking into this not knowing who Owen is it almost makes you think oh Owen's a decent guy he's a swell guy he's an all right guy and he's not he isn't he runs his own cult <laughs> 2020 the whole it blows my mind that he's comfortable talking to this guy who has did the things that he did during the worldwide crisis as the guy that did one of the worst things that you could possibly do. Owen, the the false savior. Give me your money and I'll provide you a place if the world collapses around you for you to go. It's 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 crazy. I don't know what's on the other side of any of it. And we were I mean, we were two gym owners in a in a quiet, sleepy suburb of New Jersey, and everybody in the world knew who who we were. And there were people I'll never get to meet who, who were maybe just a little bit inspired, like the guy in Australia who was, you know, I don't know where he was at when he, when he heard the story, but he liked it enough to wear the t-shirt to a protest and the hat, and, you know, and that was his, his shield and his armor, you know, for, for that day. So it's when, when you start to understand how impactful every single one of your choices are, you step into this new level where, you're not afraid of anything because it's like, I'll handle it. Whatever, whatever comes, I'll handle it. And the world is not such a scary place anymore. Even when you're considering scary things. It's interesting whenever you consider the real life implications of, or consequences of Owen's actions and the lawsuit and whatnot that he's going through. But uh, this is the Texas Goat Radio Show. As always, till next time.